in che da parte del libro della mia memoria, dinanzi alla quale poco si potrebbe leggere, si trova una rubrica la quale dice Incipit Vita Nova. Archbishop Lipscomb, Mr. Weber, Mrs. Vaughn, Mrs. Ortega, clergy, distinguished guests, Faculty and staff of Montgomery Catholic Preparatory School, family and friends, on behalf of the class of 2007, to you I extend warmest greetings, deepest love, and heartfelt thanks. Dante Alighieri wrote in his La Vita Nuova, in that part of the book of my memory before which little can be read, there is a rubric which says, Incipit Vita Nova, here begins the new life. 
In the still short story of our lives, there are small red letters in the midst of these ceremonies which spell, here begins the new life. But knowing Dante, it is no great stretch to imagine these words engraved above a looming gate. And so it is that we stand now on the threshold about which we skirted for four years, wondering all the time about what becomes of those who vanish into the other side. What we now face, what we always face, is death. Death is always before us in some form or another, at times about pricking us, at other times shaking us to the core. If we are where we ought now to be, we are shaken to the core by the prospect of the darkness before us, for we have not often been faced with such drastic change, and we fear that once we take that step, not only can we never turn back, but neither can we taste again in this life which we have lived. But this sort of death is nothing more than a flash. It is the antithesis of life, not in so much as it is the lack of life, but in that whereas life is forever, Death is but an instant, a flame which burns from us that which weighs upon us, and with which we cannot hope to grow. How, though, can we grow if we must leave everything behind us? The fact is that we need not and do not leave everything. We can take only ourselves, but so much is within us whose origin is not with us, but with those whom we love. Whomever or whatever we have attached to our hearts remains with us as long as we keep it. We never begin as blank slaves, but as creatures graced by that which is at our core. At conception, we hold within us the grace of God, and as we grow, we retain more which is good, the promising results of an experiment called life. Good, which is alloyed within us by our hardships and sufferings, our trials and tribulations. For flames, though they burn away the chaff, make one what was disjointed and whole what was broken. We are most fortunate in that we do indeed know what is before us. The sign is on the lintel, incipit vita nova. In the new life, we are naked, vulnerable. We are stripped of the paraphernalia, as little as there may be over so short a time, which we long confused for ourselves. We can now identify that which defines us and that which mires us. We fear losing our friends, our routines, and familiar landscapes. These things have made us comfortable, but our only rest is in the Lord, and we often find that much with which we are familiar has ceased to be salutary, and that it is necessary that we enter into our new lives in order to be restored to health. Death, however, does not always heal as we would wish it. Sometimes so much of us has been converted into something less that what remains after death is but a shriveled core. A log may burn only insofar as it is not eaten by termites. What they leave behind their gorging is light wood, but it does not burn. When we are allowed ourselves to rot away, we become less than ourselves. Therefore, we as logs must be burned so that the rot may be left behind us. This lessening of the mass of our bodies, however, is even more painful than the burning fire of death, and it is this which we fear even more than death itself, for with experience we may otherwise come to welcome our passing. The great joy, however, is that once we become purely ourselves, however little that may be, we can be restored to being whole. 
This restoration has been achieved for us by Christ, for he has turned the evil of death into something through which he can restore us to life. We cannot imagine a world without death, but our risen Lord has given reason to this chaos and has taken away its finality for those who believe that we may live and grow in him who is the way, the truth, and the life. We came to...